I certainly grant you that you will not usually see this question this many times. <laughs> but uh, this is also what happens when you lean on a key. You don't mean to burn anybody's retinas out or anything here. But we're on router 3 and we're being told, please answer yes or no, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? And as I was mentioning earlier with the brackets, remember the confirm that we saw in the last video when we reloaded a switch? Well, now we're being told yes or no. And in this particular case, we've got to give the switch, or excuse me, the router, a yes, no answer. So I'm going to hit Y. And let me move that up just a tad there. There we go. So now we've actually, we're actually being prompted to go into setup mode at this point. And we can still use iOS help, and you'll notice it says default settings are in the square bracket. So you have to be careful with that because sometimes when you're zipping through questions in setup mode, you know, you're, you're just hitting the enter key without almost without thinking about it. And then all of a sudden you've taken a default you didn't want, and you're like, ah, shoot, I wish I hadn't done that. So then you just got to change it. But here we're given the message basic management setup configures only enough connectivity for management of the system. Extended setup will ask you to configure each interface on the system. Would you like to enter basic management setup? And you could say yes to that. And okay, we're going to configure some global parameters. We're being asked to give the name of the router. That's not too hard. So we go with R3. Then we're asked for an enable secret. The enable secret is a password used to protect access to privileged exec and configuration modes. It is even kind enough to tell us that this password, after entered, becomes encrypted in the configuration. So we will put uh, Cisco for that. And then we're asked to put in an enable password. It's used when you do not specify an enable secret password with some older software versions and some boot images. So let's say that I don't want to do that. Well, I can't, I can't default. <laughs> I can't say no. So let's say that I'm thinking, okay, just, just for, you know, shins and giggles, I'm going to put Cisco here too. I'll just make them both the same. Well, I can't do that either. And that I like, you know, they, they shouldn't be the same because there's no use in having a secret password that's encrypted if you have a non-encrypted password sitting right there in the text for everyone to read. So since we're all going to be CCNAs, I'll put CCNA there. Now, we're being asked for the virtual terminal password, which is used to protect access to the router over a network interface. Well, of course, what is that? Telnet. That's our Telnet password. And let's see. What do we put for this one? Let's just put Cisco for this one, too. And now it's asking us if we want to configure something called Synup. Uh, and this is a network management protocol, actually. And we don't, we don't want to do that. Notice that yes is the default. So let's say that I hit that. I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to, I meant to say no. Well, you can hit escape all you want to and the back key and the up key and whatever. And it's not going to do anything. Of course, hitting the up key just goes through your history. Uh, so now you're kind of stuck. And then it's asking about your interface summary. You know, any interface listed with OK value no does not have a valid configuration. So let's say now that you're, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go back and I'll get rid of the SNMP configuration manually and I'll just go from here. So I'll put uh, Ethernet 0 here. Uh, you know, do you want IP on this interface? Sure I do. Well, what's the address of the interface? Then you put what you wanted. And be careful with this because sometimes when you're using their non-default, you, know, you have to check it. It's almost like it adds numbers to the end. I, don't, I haven't seen that in a while, but just a real-world note. Just be careful about that. And let's say that you're going to put in, let's just say you'll take the default. And now, you know, it's got me with one interface. It shows you the config very quickly, and it shows you a password you've set. You've set a community SNMP string, which is way beyond the CSENT scope. And now you've got a choice. You know, go to the iOS command prompt without saving the config, Return back to the setup without saving this config, or save this configuration to NVRAM and exit. So let's say that at this point you just say, you know what, I'll just do it again, and I'll just hit 1. And it starts you over again. So at this point, you know, the basic one is not that many questions, since we went with what we went with, the choices. 
But the extended one, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, it seems like. To me, it's kind of a clumsy way to set up the router. I like to do it from the command line, but we need to know about the setup mode as well. And you may like this way, that's fine. So let's say, though, that at this point, you know, you've been working on it for a few minutes and you keep tripping over stuff. He's just like, you know, just get me out of this. How do I get back to the command prompt or the, com yeah, the command line prompt without saving any of this now? Did you happen to notice this one line? Because I've seen people with this, it's like, boy, I, I don't know how to do that. Well, here's what you do. Use Control C to abort the dialog, the configuration dialog, at any prompt. So at any time you want to just get out of this, just hit Control C. And you'll see it's going to give you some more messages. And then at the bottom of that, it's going to say configuration aborted no changes made. So let's give it a moment here and see what else it's going to do. Because this will always take a moment or two. Or three or four or five. And it usually goes through about the time you think, oh, is something wrong here? <laughs> you know, it's like the elevator. The more you hit the button, the slower it goes. So you just hit the enter key like, you know, five more times to make it hurry up. Doesn't work. Wish it did, but it doesn't. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer than usual. Actually, this is how long it takes. It just takes longer when you're watching it. There we go. Press return to get started, which I did 37 times already. So I'll do it one more time. And then we'll get the usual pile of messages here that we expect. Don't let this throw you to the first time you do it, because I still remember what it was like the first time when I got my home lab. And this was back in the days there was no used Cisco router market. There was no GNS3. There was no nothing <laughs> except uh, real routers, which I still recommend if you get your hands on it. But I had to buy all new stuff, so this was not an inexpensive lab. Anyway, you know, the first time I saw this, like, oh my God, what did I do to the router? Uh, you know, you're going to get all this at the beginning because your line protocols are going to show up or down. If you don't know what those are, you will shortly. You know, it's going to give you some other messages. And when you see your carrot here, you know, just hit enter. And now you're at the command line. You're good to go. So let's look at our config here. And we're told to get immediately that's going to do tell us that our non-volatile config memory is not present. So I'm going to save that real quick. And I could have done a show run just to show the show running config, but that's fine. So once that builds... And let's see a couple of defaults here. You know, we've got a host name of router, and we've got something, a couple of services that are showing as running. We didn't configure this. These are the defaults for this particular router. And then no service password encryption. This is going to be different, it would seem, on every router you ever touch. But you want to watch this no service password encryption. That's pretty much a global deal. Also notice that since we're on a router, all the interfaces are shut by default. This is a really important default because on your switch, they're all open by default, which is a bit of a security issue. So again, on your router, when you're done configuring it, when you're done configuring an interface, you've got to open it when you're done. There's nothing wrong with configuring it while it's open, but you do have to open it eventually, and we'll be doing plenty of that. So a couple of interesting defaults there. We've got the router name set to router. No service password encryption is the default, and the interfaces are all shut down. Let's practice a couple of commands here. First off, let's just change the name of the router. We're going to do a conf t for short for configure terminal. The command is host name, and it's just the system's network name. So we're going to name it R3. And notice that the prompt changes immediately to R3. There's no reload. I didn't have to save it, anything like that. Uh, it, it is rare. You will see a very important exception in this course, and I will make sure to point it out to you several times when we do it in OSPF. But it is rare that you have to reload a router for a change to take effect. So that's one thing we really do like about Cisco devices. Now, let's go ahead and set up some passwords. We're going to set those manually. And let's do the old conf t and enable password Cisco and, and enable secret of CCNA. We'll go ahead and set a VTY line password as well. We'll 
we'll do the login and then password and we'll put the CSET for this one. Now a couple of reminders here. We know that the enable secret takes precedence over enable password. We know that the VTY line password, that's a separate password as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. But this is what I really want to point out to you because I still see this to this day. This causes a lot of consternation. It, it does not matter whether you put the login command first or the password command first, as long as you use them both. Because I, I, I see people online just freaking about this. You know, it's like, oh my God, yeah, I disabled the login. Well, until password is set. And I understand that because I've been there, you know, when you're starting, you're really sensitive. It's like, I don't want to break this thing. And here's the key. They're only paying attention to this part or say this part. <laughs> uh, but read the whole message. Login disabled until password is set. So we are fine there. Now, let's go ahead and do a show run. And when it does that, oh, came up too fast. There's our encrypted password, and there's our non-encrypted password. Is that VTY line password going to be encrypted or non-encrypted? It's going to be non-encrypted. It's just sitting there. So the only one that's encrypted by default is the enable secret. So if we want to take care of that, we can run the service password encryption. Now, depending on what router you're running, but you're always going to see a lot of these services if you run iOS help. And this is what I mean by running iOS help when you're not necessarily needing it, but just to have a look around. And it's simply service and do not panic. <laughs> you do not need to know all of these services for the C Center, the CCNA. Uh, there are ones on here that I think I use, I've used in my career uh, only when I was taking the IE lab and you never know when you, what you're going to see in there. But there are some pretty important ones in here. In password encryption, you'll notice that one right here and it just tells you, hey, we're going to encrypt the system passwords. Now, as I mentioned probably several times in the course, there's a reason that you don't go back to work after you take a course like this and say, hey, I'm going to enable everything I saw in this course. Because everything has a cost. But some of these features do have security issues. They have security holes. So you don't necessarily want to just run a bunch of services anytime you want to or anytime you just want to see what they're going to do, uh, unless you're in a lab environment, of course. Don't turn services on or off, and really on at work, unless you know exactly what they're going to do and unless you really need them. That's really the bottom line when it comes to those, especially the Keep Alive's TCP and UDP small servers. Uh, use them only if absolutely necessary. So let's go ahead and run that password encryption. And, you know, no pigeons are released, nothing happens. We don't even get a confirm there. Now that's kind of odd, but let's go ahead and run show config and let's see what we've got. Oh, actually, show run. Sorry about that. Let's run a quick show run and see what we've got after we ran that. And there we go. And then we'll save this, and then we'll have the same file for our startup and running configurations. But now the enable password has been encrypted, and the VTY line password has been encrypted. So again, you know, watch your services. It's not something where you want to go in and turn every service on. You definitely don't want to do that. But this is a very important one. And you'll note that it is usually turned off by default, no service password encryption. And you'll notice now that the word no is gone from in front of that. It's really, really easy to overlook that. So be careful with that on your exam and when you're working in a lab. A couple of notes here, uh, one obvious and one not so obvious. If you attempted to actually type this string in for the enable password, I see people every once in a while, I like to mention this, and I know you're already nodding your head. You know, come on, Chris, I knew that. But they take it very literally. Don't take these strings literally. If you're prompted for the enable secret password and you start typing in dollar sign one, dollar sign J-I-Y, that's not going to work. This is simply a hash. Uh, it's a representation of the password. And I don't think that anybody's going to look at that string and say, oh, okay, that's, you know, CCNA. We set the enable secret to CCNA. Uh, and the enable password of Cisco is now encrypted. Now, you'll notice a couple of numbers there. Though that's indicating the level of encryption. And you can set those manually. 
uh, in, in some cases. But I tell you, here's the thing, and, and this isn't just me saying this. This is Cisco saying this on their own website, so you know it's very, very serious. I, I hesitate to even mention those encryption values, you know, the 5 and the 7, because it really doesn't matter. All of these are so easily crackable that it is not even funny. It, it's really not because you can get a free program on the net that's going to crack one of these in about 30 seconds, probably even less by this point. They're, they're very easily compromised. And Cisco does mention that on their own website in their documentation for this particular command. It's like, don't rely on this uh, to make your passwords impenetrable because they're not going to be. They're going to be very easily acquired by someone who grabs one of those programs. This is actually a defense over what we semi-jokingly call the over-the-shoulder network attack, but that has happened where someone's just behind you and they see the passwords in your config and they're looking over your shoulder and they see it's like, oh, you know, try to tone it into Chris's router tonight and I'll, I'll just do that. But if they're looking at this, you know, it what it does, it discourages a very casual attacker. Even someone with a little bit of sophistication is going to be able to crack these, which is why we have plenty of other defenses. But again, don't depend on these for the be-all and end-all of your network security because they're just not that way. But they do discourage very casual attackers who might look over your shoulder when they shouldn't be. So let's see, we talked about those encryption levels and that is the end of this particular video. What we're going to do on the beginning of the next one is look at some more interface defaults and we're going to open some of these interfaces and see what happens. And the next video is full, chock full of, I should say, chock full of troubleshooting goodness because I've got a great chart for you. We're going to look at these uh, commands on the live equipment as well so you can troubleshoot these different situations very, very quickly because frankly, not only are they liable to pop up on the exam, but they're very common in lab and network environments. I will see you on the next video.